What is up, everybody? It's Jenna back here with another video. Um, I know some of you might be a little confused because I said a couple videos ago that I wasn't going to be putting out as many videos anymore. But to be honest, um, I don't know. I miss design. I've I've come to a point where I miss design because at work, I don't do design anymore. And even with underpaid clothing, I've been so focused on marketing that I'm not really doing design with that either. Um, so today I wanted to uh, talk about some uh, web design and I'd like to show you guys um, some web design best practices because I know there are a lot of developers who follow me here on YouTube and um, I think that having a good um, sense of design will help you with your portfolio and just, you know, help you if you need to design a website. Okay, so I have this really great article here that I'm going to leave down in the description, but I'd like to go through it with you guys um, just to show you what it is about. So let me move myself up here so I'm kind of out of the way if I can. Okay. Um, so this article goes over common web design mistakes and some of these you're going to look at and be like, wow, you've probably been making some of these mistakes because even me as a designer um, with an eye for design, I've probably made some of these mistakes myself. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is content is not broken down into logical blocks. So if you look at these two examples here, in this example on the left, the content is just all over the place. You got these different paragraphs here. Um, a lot of things just fighting for attention. Your eye doesn't really know where to go. Um, so it's just, it's not as easy to read. Where if you look at this, um, this design on the right here, you'll see you got this nice, um, this nice paragraph up here up top. Then you scroll down and they throw a different color um, here to break up the content a bit and then you got our services and then you got the picture and all that so it's easier on the eyes you want to make things very easy to read and just um, you know websites can have a lot of information on them so you want to make it as easy as possible for the viewers to digest Okay, so the next one is there's uneven spaces between items on a web page. This is a big one. So if you look at these two examples here, you have this one where um, the content is uh, closer to the top than it is to the bottom. And it just doesn't make sense here where if you look at this example here, you will see there's even spacing right here. There's even spacing here and there's even spacing here. So you want to have even spacing in between things. So things are centered, things look nice and good. You don't want, you know, this article to be closer to the top and, you know, this article to be um, closer. You know, it just doesn't make sense. You want to have things evenly spaced. So definitely, um, like I said, this article is going to be down in the description. So definitely keep it as a reference. Like when you're designing a web page, keep this article handy and just go through it and make sure that you're following all these, um, all these examples here. The next one, padding is too small. Uh, means the users cannot break down content into logical blocks. Okay, so look at these two examples here and look how much easier this example is to read than this example. So you got to keep in mind as well um, as the user scrolling, like if you're on a 13 inch laptop, when you're scrolling this web page right here, you're probably seeing this, um, this block of content right here. You're probably seeing this, um, has like one focus so it's probably like mostly all you see on the screen whereas if you're scrolling this website on a 13 inch laptop you're probably seeing this content and this content you're like you get you get overwhelmed with too much content at once so you want to have a good amount of padding um, between different blocks of content to break it up a bit and to 
um, give each block of content its own focus, um, if that makes sense. So let's move on. This one I see a lot. A lot of you are, a lot of people are doing this. And this is to avoid low contrast um, for text copy on an image. And when I show you this, a lot of people are doing this. I see this a ton when people are asking me to review their portfolios. And a lot of people come to me and they ask me to, um, for some design advice, um, to look at their portfolios. And I see this a lot. So when you're putting text over an image like this, you want to make sure that you either have a strong enough drop shadow so that the text stands out and is readable, or even more preferably, um, is that a word preferably? I think it is. Um, you want to have a dark background on this. So maybe just give this um, image here like a black overlay. It doesn't have to be a big one, maybe like a, 50%, maybe even 40% overlay, and suddenly this text is now readable. Um, something else I wanted to also point out, if you look at this text here, you'll notice that there's different font weights. So bring your ideas to life is a bold font, then the subheading is just a regular font weight. Um, so think about that as well. You want your titles to stand out, so you want them to be bold and obviously a bigger font size um, and you want the subtitles to be a lighter font. Use different font weights to um, show the different importance of the, the text. So the title is the most important so you want that to be bold and the subtitle that's not as important so you don't want that to be bold. Um, so think about those things whenever you're working with text, okay? Um, okay, so this shows a good example. See how, um, if I had to guess, this black overlay is probably like a 30 to 40% overlay, and you can still see the image. The image still looks great. It's a great looking image on a website, but the text is now readable because they threw a overlay on there. So a lot of people make that mistake. Definitely make sure that you pay attention to that when designing your website. Also, pay attention to this little arrow here. Whenever you have, I think, um, I think that whenever you have a full um, script, full height um, landing page here, so you come to this page and um, you want the home page to take up the full height of the browser window. Whenever you do that, I would definitely always include a little arrow down here um, because you want, you want. I know sometimes it's obvious, but you need to think about your users and that it might not be so obvious to them to scroll down. So just have an arrow there just to play it safe so people know that you can scroll down. Uh, too many styles on one page. Okay, so you look at these two examples here and you'll notice um, this font is blue for some reason and um, you got a red underline here for some reason. That doesn't look good. You got a serif font mixed with sans serif fonts. You want to have a uh, a brand style and you want what your website to reflect that. So you want um, your website to have one style of font, have them all the same color, you know, in this example. In this example here, it doesn't make sense that these are a blue font. Like, why is that blue? It doesn't make any sense. Why is there a red line here? It doesn't make any sense. You want it to look uniform and established, if that makes sense. So definitely um, make sure that your style is consistent throughout the website. Let's scroll down. The color block is too narrow. So look at this. Um, Look how bad this one looks and look how good this one looks. So um, you definitely want to use colors to separate different uh, parts of the site, but make sure that you have a color palette um, so that you're using the same colors and the same colors look good. So a lot of people make this mistake as well. They're not using a color palette and um, that could be an issue. Um, you want your color scheme to look good and you want your colors to, um, to make sense. 
And when you're thinking about colors, also think about color psychology and how each color represents a different thing, a different thing to someone's psyche. So for example, the color blue means trust. And that is why social networks tend to use the color blue, like Facebook and Twitter and um, Instagram did in the beginning, but they changed that. Um, so I have a video on color psychology, actually. I'll also link that in the description of this video if you'd like to learn more about color psychology. Okay, so also... Oh, I also wanted to show you real quick. This video is probably going to be a little longer than I had liked it to, but there's a lot of good content here, I think. So let's go to Adobe. I think they call it Color now. They used to call it Cooler. And it looks like they still do call it Cooler. So what this website will do is it will help you out um, coming up with a color scheme. Um, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> so you can use this tool to come up with a color scheme and, uh, that's kind of a crazy one. So let's say your branding is blue, for example, and you want your, you want a blue color scheme. Um, let's see, I haven't used this in quite a while. Let's actually go to let's see monochromatic. Okay, you're going to want something that's like complementary or monochromatic. Let's see here. Okay, perfect. So like, well, this isn't perfect. These two colors are a little close. So let's just change the shade a little bit. Okay, so see how um, these colors look fairly good with each other. I'm not a fan of this brown, but you can come in here and you can... Uh, you can tweak the colors a bit, you know, to your liking. So play around with this tool. And okay, so you can see here how these colors look fairly good with each other. Um, I probably wouldn't even use all five of these. I probably only use like three of them. I probably only use like this blue, this blue, and like this orange if I was going to go with this color scheme. So come to this website and... Pick out a color scheme for your for your site. Um, make sure that the colors look good with each other. Like if you look at this, this doesn't look good. This looks horrible. If you were going to use these colors together on a website, it would not look very good. Um, so make sure you choose colors that are like shades or complementary or monochromatic. You want to stay away from doing like triad and... I mean, that looks okay, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, if you don't think your colors look good, ask some others for advice to make sure that you have a good looking color scheme. And um, yeah, okay, so let's move on here about colors. And the next one is too much text copy inside of narrow columns. I also see this one a lot on a lot of websites. Um, so if you look at this example here, Look how overwhelming this text here is on the left-hand side. There's um, a lot of blocks of text in three separate things. Like, if you came to a website like this, would you read all this? That's a lot. And the way it's broken up like this, it's just, it's a lot of text to go through. And people um, have short attention spans. They have busy lives. No one wants to read all this. So keep it short, keep it brief, only go over main points, main topics. Make it so that it's something that people would actually look at and read. Um, so yeah, just cut down the number of columns, shorten the text. Otherwise, nobody will read it, exactly. Uh, the next one is too much centered text. So if we go down to the example, yeah, look at this. Um, I fall on victim to this. I did this on my old site. And when you have large blocks of text like this, I would say you would probably want to have it left justified. Having it all centered like this just looks kind of bad. And again, this looks very overwhelming and looks a lot like, I don't want to read this. It's a lot of stuff going on. So make sure again, you keep it short and to the point and, um, 
It's this one right here. You have about them, and then you have a why choose us. Um, when you have a website, you're trying to convince somebody to do something. If you have a portfolio, you're trying to convince an employer to hire you. If you have an e-commerce website, you're trying to convince the users to buy your products. So, so you don't want to overwhelm the users with too much information. The next one, text copy is superimposed over an essential part of the image. So thank you Shopify, because when I was creating my e-commerce website, I had to go, it looked like this, like Shopify would only let you do this. I'm calling you out Shopify. My next video will be a review of Shopify. Um, so basically I had to do some hacking um, in my website's code to, well, not really hacking. I just had to figure out how to edit my website's code in the back end. And I had to do something like this so that you could actually see the image and the text because this just looks silly and this looks good. You can see the girl's face um, and you can see everything well. So keep that in mind. I'm not sure how this would look on mobile though. On mobile, you would probably have to um, do some tweaking. And on mobile, at some point, it might cover a little bit, but again, it's only covering her hair. It's not really covering her face or anything. So hero images can be tricky like that. So just make sure you're not doing this. This looks silly. Don't do that. Uh, misusing visual, ah, misusing visual hierarchy. This is a big one. I get this a lot and I see this one a lot. I see people making this mistake a lot. So you want, I spoke about this briefly before. Look at these font sizes here. This is all over the place. You got this font size is huge. This font size is too small. Um, so the most important thing when you come to this website is boom, bring your ideas to life. Whatever this company is trying to sell, they're trying to sell you that you can bring your ideas to life. And that is the first thing that they want you to see. So why not actually make it a big font size? Um, if you look at this example, this font size is too close to this font size. You want this one to stand out and this one to be a second thought. Um, maybe if they're just skimming through this website, they might not even read this. They might just read this and then scroll down. Okay, and then this, um, this is like, think of it as heading. So like this would be a heading one, this would be like a, a heading two or a heading three um, in web development. So think about things like that. Like think about what part of your text is most important and whatever your text is most important, make it bold, make it a bigger size, whatever text is least important, don't make it bold, make it a little smaller. And again, refer to this article as many times as you need um, to, to reference. And by the way, I didn't write this article. Um, I will give credit at the end of this video to, I'll scroll back up and give credit to whoever wrote this article because it is a great article. Um, so again, this is coming out a little longer than I'd like. So we're going to speed the process up a little bit. Um, Let's see, is this just another example? Yeah, this is just another example. See how this over here looks crazy and silly? And over here it looks good. Like what you'll get. Like we're showing you what you will get. Then this is not as important. So it's a smaller font size. I hope you get the point with this. Okay, one logical set is split into two. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense. So this is all meant to be one a uh, logical set. So you got the apartment photo gallery, um, but notice how this one on the left looks like it's broken up into two separate separate entities where this one on the right, it looks like it goes together. So keep that in mind when designing your websites. The title is too large and too long. So if you look at this title, this looks plain ridiculous um the it's too big it's too large see how this looks much better that's pretty pretty self-explanatory there um 
So keep that in mind as well. Using the wrong border style for buttons. Um, this one I don't see too often, um, but if you are doing this, then you probably shouldn't be designing sites at all. <laughs> like if you're doing this, just hire a designer if you're if you're doing this and take take Photoshop away from you. Someone needs to pull Photoshop away from you if you're doing this right here. <laughs> so I don't see this one too often, but if um this is the correct way your button should look like. Not this. Please don't do this. Um, okay, moving on. Too many colors. I will see this one a lot, but I went over colors before, so I'm not going to stay on this one too much. You can see how this one on the left looks ridiculous, and this one on the right looks good, right? I think most of us can agree with that. Again, if you're doing this over here, just hire a designer. Overload menu. This is another big one that I actually see a lot on a lot of sites, even big e-commerce sites where they have way too much going on in the header section. And I pay attention to this a lot to make sure that I don't make this mistake on my websites. Um, so as you can see, they're just throwing way too much stuff into the header. Like this is crazy. You got you got a phone number, which is okay if you're a business that wants your phone number in the header. Then it makes sense there, put it in the header. But if you look at this example compared to this one, see how much cleaner this looks? This looks much better. See how they only have three social networks here instead of like five. So just put your three most important social networks and then maybe put all your social networks on the footer of the website. You know, um, and what else did they do? They took out the phone number, but if you still wanted the phone number, a clean way to add that in here is you could probably put it like right here. Just put like a circle phone icon here and then people can click that uh, phone icon to, to call you. Um, so that's another option. Don't have too much stuff going on in the header. Okay, also long solid copy. You want to break up your copy into different um, paragraphs based on like what paragraphs make sense together, um, certain thoughts into different paragraphs. So don't do this. If people see this, they're not going to want to read it. And if people see this, they're going to be more likely to read it because it's easier on the eyes. You ever see people who have like really ridiculously long social media posts? Do you ever read those? I know I don't. I'm sorry. I don't read those. So you're not going to want to read this. Um, headline is positioned at the same distance between previous and next paragraphs. Um, so actually this, where before this made sense up top because it was different sections of the website. If you have different paragraphs, like this is a heading for this paragraph, it actually makes sense for this to be closer to this than this because it doesn't have to do with this paragraph. So you actually don't, in this case, you actually don't want the, the it to be perfectly centered in between paragraphs. Um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. So, um, so yeah, that's, see how, um, this, you can't really tell if this is supposed to go with this or you don't know. So here it's pretty clear that it's for the next paragraph. Um, there's no logical order. Okay. So again, titles, subtitles, I talked about that before. You obviously want the title to be bigger than the subtitle. Uh, different padding above and below blocks. So this is again, see how this doesn't look so great with uh, her image being closer up top and this being a different distance. In this case, it looks a lot cleaner and better to just have equal distance in between um, in between these pieces of content here. Okay, so the next one, the caption is positioned too close to an image. Um, so if you look at this, I actually see this one a lot and um, the caption is very close to the image here and over here, it's not so close. Um, honestly, this doesn't bother me as much because it does go with the image. This actually looks a little too far away from it, in my opinion. Um, but just, I guess, something to be aware of. 
um, there's too little space between subhead and text copy. Um, so if you look here, the heading is too close to the copy. Um, you want to have a good amount of space here. So keep that in mind. Uh, stand out elements are placed too close to the main text. Um, yeah, that's a big one. So you want some standout elements in your article if you're writing like a blog article, for example. Um, so you want this specific, um, you know, line of text to be like a, like a blog quote or something like that. Um, so you want it to have a good amount of space so it stands out. The next one, low contrast elements. Um, what's going on here? I guess this is too small. Hmm. I don't think this looks terrible, but I guess... Honestly, they're saying this is the good one. I think this is a little too big, but um, just something to keep in mind. You want things like um, things like this to stand out. You want to make them bigger, okay? Um, using a color background for a narrow text block. So, yeah, something like this. This just looks kind of silly, especially with this um, long block of text here. So instead of having a background here, it looks much better to not have that background um, if it's just a narrow block like that. I actually made this mistake on my last portfolio. Um, so keep that in mind. It doesn't look so great. Uh, don't use a font color for the subhead. That makes sense. Look how ridiculous this looks. Looks kind of crazy. Don't do this. Stop it. Um, there's an empty space between two full screen images. Yeah, you definitely don't want this. You definitely want your, if you want to have a landing page like this, you want your full screen images to um, be back to back, you know, touching each other. Uh, too many design ac accents. Um, yeah, see how crazy this looks with all the, all the boldness. It's kind of overwhelming, difficult on the eye and hard to read. Where in this article, it's much easier to read. There's less bold stuff. I don't know why you would do this, but don't. And moving on, how much longer is this article? All right, we're almost done. <laughs> this is a long article, but it's very valuable and very good to um, to keep on hand. Uh, too many typography styles. We already kind of went over this before, but again, how I said to use different typography styles, like use different font weights and stuff like that, but don't overdo it. Like over here, you have like this big text and it's um, italicized. Um, just look at these two, see how much easier this is to read than this. Text is a hard thing, so definitely come back to this article and refer to this stuff um, whenever you're designing a page with a lot of text on it. Uh, centering text in a long article. They went over this before. I could have sworn before they were, I already went over this, but again, notice how the left justified text is a lot easier to read. It's more like a book than this text over here. That's all centered. You don't want to have this. That's why books are laid out with it left justified. Headline appears too close to the image. So you want the um, headline to have a good amount of space between the headline and the image. Using italics when not needed. Okay, so I guess this doesn't necessarily have to be italic, so don't make it italic. All right, moving on. This article is kind of long, so this video is a little longer than I'd liked it to be. But again, I think this is very good stuff here. Uh, blocks appear out of place relative to the center of the page and each other. Um, so yeah, I don't know why in the world you would do this, but I don't see this mistake too often. But you definitely want this to be centered and not like this. Okay, so we finally reached the bottom of this article, and this was written by um, 
Ira Smirnova, uh, Masha Balea, Julia Zas. I'm probably butchering these names, and Julia Zas. So, um, so yeah, really great article. And then they, um, then they try to sell you a website. So, great article here. Actually, if you look at this, actually. On their own website, if you look at this color, it looks a little ridiculous with the rest of the page. So they're even not uh, following their own rules on their own site. But I guess that's their, let's see, is that their branding colors? Yeah, that's their branding colors. So I guess it's okay. I guess they get a pass. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to go over this with you guys because I needed to get my design fix on and I think this is a topic that will be very valuable to a lot of people. So if you found this or um if you found this video to be helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up and share it on social media. Um definitely uh subscribe to this channel and um Hit the little bell icon so you get the notifications. I'm probably going to start going live a lot more just because that's an easier and quicker way to put out videos. And um, yeah, so definitely subscribe um, and uh, check out the new channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you next time.